Hey, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Katie and this is Katie Lynn Lives where we make you as physically and mentally fit as possible through exercise and meditation. So today I'm going to bring you a few tips that I wish I knew when I was starting my exercise journey before I was ever even considering getting a personal training certification and I had no clue what I was doing. So the first thing that I wish I knew was the primary movements of the body. Your body is a kinetic chain. So we have all these different joints in our body with muscles overlapping and we need to understand how these muscles and muscle groups work. So for the upper body, our primary movements are going to be push and pull. And for our lower body, the primary movements are going to be squat and lunge. And then for the core, we are going to have a twist as well. And of course, a little crunch motion to add that in there. So when we think of this, we often don't realize that we want to be strong in every single direction. So when you think of doing a push movement, for example, in a push up, you're going to be pushing in front of your chest. Whereas with an overhead press, you're going to want to be strong pushing overhead. And for a tricep dip, you'll be pushing down. So when you start to create exercises for yourself, you start going to the gym, you want to be thinking about being strong in every single direction. And this is true for all of your movements. For your lunges, for example, instead of just doing a reverse lunge, you can mix it up by doing a front lunge, doing a lateral lunge, doing a curtsy lunge, and working your muscles in every single direction. Isn't that right, Skipper? <laughs> Uh, something else I wish I knew when I was getting started is the difference between isolation exercises and compound exercises. If you are just getting started, you're just learning, hey, you're just learning how, um, how to move your body, how to isolate your muscles, um, getting comfortable with the movements that are required for exercise, isolation movements are a great way to build initial strength, right? So for example, if I were to do a lateral abduction with my arm, I would just be moving at this joint right here, the glenohumeral joint, that would primarily be drawn out of my delt. Now, yes, there is some stabilization happening around here, but primarily we're using the delt here and that's an isolation exercise. But if we wanted to increase the intensity of the workout or exercise, what we could do is we could do a compound movement. So a great example of a compound movement would be a push-up. When we are in a push-up, what we are doing is we are activating multiple muscles at once in this position. So your core is stabilizing yourself so that your body is still. When we do the push-up itself, we are using our triceps and our chest to push ourselves back up. So the push-up is really primarily drawn out of the tries and chest. That's why you hear people saying today's chest and tries day, or today's back and bys day. If we were to do, for example, rows, I could show you right here that a row is going to force you to use your bicep and your back muscles to draw the movement. This is what's going to increase the intensity and help you improve your fitness overall and help you in what's called your activities of daily living so that you can gain some more comfortability being strong throughout your, your whole body, right? And then you can go ahead from there and increase the intensity and that's where we get into strength building and working on your physique, your aesthetic, all that type of stuff. With that said, I want to get a little bit into progressive overload and nutrition. So something I had no clue about was that if you want to see muscular growth, you're going to need to do progressive overload. If you want to see increased endurance, you're going to need to be doing progressive overload with your cardiovascular training, right? Anytime you want to improve, you need to push your body a little bit further over time so that your body can adapt to those changes. So for example, if Today, I can max out eight reps with a two pound weight on this side three times, then maybe I'll do that exercise for my next couple workouts this week. And the next week, I could increase the weight by a couple pounds to see if I can get more, like eight reps with a couple more pounds, 
Or what I could do is I could increase the rep count, say, to 12 reps three times with a two pound weight. There's different ways to increase intensity, either by increasing the weight or by increasing the rep count. Another thing is you want to be diversifying your workouts. Your body only adapts to the changes you place on it. So if you wanna be really fit, uh, you don't just wanna do the same exercises over and over and over again. Diversify your exercises. Try moving in different positions. Try different weights. Try different machines. Try different combinations of workouts. Try reducing your rest time to force your body to adapt to those changes and then that will make you have greater fitness overall. However, I do want to add a little caveat here, which is before you start doing all of this progressive overload and training and lifting heavy, you need to make sure that your form is proper. Now, I can't see you, so I can't tell you exactly what you need to change in your posture, but what you wanna make sure you do is that you roll back your shoulders so you're gonna go back and down so that you are standing up nice and tall and make sure that your lower back isn't arched too much. You want your straight spine to feel pretty straight when you are doing most exercises with your core engaged, your belly button drawing a little bit in towards your spine. So you wanna feel this like almost sense of confidence in your posture and you want to align your joints. So if you're in a squat, you would have you know, your knees tracking over your middle toes and just make sure that nothing is moving um, side to side throughout the motion. Really ground yourself into the earth when you're exercising and be mindful of the movements you're making. Uh, we can go into a whole separate video about form, but just for now, I just want to mention that because there are a lot of people that have what we call dysfunctional fitness. And I would say probably most people do that. So for example, if I, I mean, yeah, if you see somebody in the gym that's rowing like this, like this, that's dysfunctional fitness. Look how arched forward they are. You wanna be rowing like this. You wanna be nice and strong. You wanna be able to use your core. You don't want to be putting that much strain on your back like this. That's how you hurt yourself, right? So it's just something to be mindful of and to keep improving. This is gonna help with your posture. If you open up your chest more, this can actually help with your breath. This is gonna help you so, so much. It can even help with your confidence. Just make sure that you have good posture and that's gonna help your fitness so much. Uh, common, Deviations in posture include lordosis, which is the arch of the lower back, and kyphosis, which is the rounding of the shoulders. So just check in on those things. Now, let's get into nutrition. Something that a friend of mine told me when I was in high school, and she was older, she was like in her 30s, she was into fitness, and she said, if you want to put on muscle, aim for eating one gram of protein per body weight. And I was like, what? And she was like, yes, you have to eat a lot of protein. Bodybuilders can eat as much as two grams or even more per pound of body weight. And this blew my mind because I had never thought of macros in this way. If you want to put on muscle, what you're going to need to do is eat lots of protein, which contain the amino acids that are gonna help build the muscle cells. So try to increase your amount of protein, having a little bit with every single meal that you have. And you can even track how much protein you have and then challenge yourself to add more throughout the day. You also want to make sure that you're drinking plenty of water. I would recommend drinking the same amount in ounces as your body weight, but maybe make that like three quarters, like a little less than a gallon would probably be ideal for most people. And that's going to help your body recover, help flush out toxins and yeah, just help you be really healthy so that your body has an opportunity to heal and grow. You wanna make sure that you're getting enough sleep too. Sleep is going to help with the repair of your muscles. You know that, but just try to keep it consistent and that's gonna help your body grow. Now back to nutrition. What I was saying about protein is so true and I became obsessed with getting in enough protein. I would always drink protein shake right after I worked out. And what I came to realize is that sometimes you need protein shake and sometimes you don't. And that has to do with your calorie expenditure as well. So if your goal is to put on weight, then of course you need to be eating more calories. If your goal is to put on more muscle, you need to be eating more calories. But you need to make sure that those calories are 
in alignment with what your goals are, that you're not eating a bunch of processed foods that are really high in sugars. But if your goal is to lose weight, of course, eat tons of protein, but you're gonna have to eat a little bit less calories. And you wanna think about how hard did I work my body when I was exercising? If you had a really intense workout, then you need to refuel your muscles. When you have carbohydrates, those break down into glycogen that gets stored in your muscles and gets stored in your liver. You need to refuel your body. But if you had a light workout, you don't need to be putting a really high caloric meal into your body immediately after just for the sake of eating it. That's a great way to go into an accidental caloric surplus. And that was a big mistake that I made when I was first starting because I would just do a really light workout. You know, I'm just maybe do a couple of these and I just didn't know what I was doing. And then I have a protein shake and then I'd be like, oh, why do I feel gross? Because I didn't need that. So pay attention to your eating as well. But I've just found that it's really important to think, what do I need right now? And listen to your actual body. Now, when it comes to getting started on your fitness journey, you also want to think about what are my goals? Do I want to look stronger and curvy or do I want to lose fat tissue? What is it that I want to do? And then from there, create a little bit of a plan for yourself about how you're going to get there and set a realistic goal for yourself. And something that I didn't realize is that if you want to lose weight, the best thing to do isn't actually running. If you want to put on muscle, the best thing to do isn't actually running. For the most part, I would recommend doing weight training. Maybe start with something more like Pilates or body weight and then incorporate some weight training if you have weights and incorporate some walks that are of a little bit higher intensity than you're used to. Walking is going to be your best friend and I'm gonna tell you why. When you walk, Yes, you're going to burn less calories than if you were running for the same period of time, but the calories you do burn are going to be coming from a higher proportion of stored fats than if you were running. When you're running, those calories are going to be coming more from stored glycogen. So you want to be in a space where you can maintain the exercise through respiration, and that is going to just help you burn more fat and maintain more muscle mass. So that's something that I had no clue and I really wish I knew when I was getting started. Strength training and walking are the way to go for most situations. And you might be thinking, Katie, I am scared to strength train. I do not want to look like a beast. I don't wanna to go to the gym and squat 100 pounds and do all that type of stuff. And you really don't have to worry about that. As a woman, you do not have enough testosterone in your body to get ridiculously jacked. You're not gonna be taking all these supplements and hormones and you know, steroids. You don't need to worry about just looking mannish. If you're a woman, it's not gonna happen. You're going to look strong and toned. That is what you want. That is, I'm telling you, it's you're gonna feel better once you start strength training. Your metabolism's gonna be better. You're gonna love the way you look get off the treadmill and, and you know every day I would say like if you're running every day like get off the treadmill run sometimes and just start doing more Pilates start doing more strength training and that's going to help you so much and those are my tips for you if you are just getting started on your fitness journey let me know down below what tips you have found have been most useful for you or if you have any advice for somebody just starting the journey or if you are just getting going what recommendations do you have and I would love to hear from you. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content just like this. I post videos like this every week on Patreon that are more educational and inspirational um, in addition to the free workouts that I post here. And that is only $5 a month, no commitment or anything. I'll also link my social media down below, my TikTok, and also my Insight Timer where you can get free meditations from me. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Oh. Also, I have a booty building program in the works. You're not going to want to miss out on that. You can sign up to get notified in the link down below. Okay, bye.